Welcome to the HR Chat Show, one of the world's most downloaded and shared podcasts designed for HR pros, talent execs, tech enthusiasts, and business leaders. For hundreds more episodes and what's new in the world of work, subscribe to the show, follow us on social media, and visit hrgazette.com. Welcome to the HR Chat Show. I'm your host today, Bill Bannum, and joining me on this episode is my friend and returning guest, Mr. Fantastic himself, Mr. Bobby Umar. Bobby is a former engineer who is now an inspirational speaker and storyteller, and he has delivered over 1,000 keynotes and workshops across four continents for the past couple of decades. Inc. Magazine named Bobby one of the top 100 leadership speakers alongside such noteworthy giants as Sir Richard Branson, and John Maxwell. Bobby is also a five times TEDx speaker and one of the top digital influencers in the world with over 650,000 global followers. On May 18th, the Benefits and Wellness Superhero Symposium returns to Toronto. Attendees will learn from experts about how to become a superhero in the eyes of employees and management. The evening event is presented by Thorpe Benefits and proudly supported by HR Gazette. Unable to attend the event in person? No problem. Simply register through Eventbrite by searching for Benefits and Wellness Superhero Symposium and you will automatically be invited to the virtual edition, taking place two weeks later. Bobby, my friend, welcome back to the show. Hey, Bill. Thanks for uh, thanks for this. I'm excited to be here. Uh, I forgot to mention as well, listeners, uh, if you want to check out Bobby's last conversation with me, if you can't get enough of him on the HR chat show, you can do that by going all the way back to November 2020. That was a different time. And I believe it was episode 222. Two, two. So please do check that one out as well. I Bobby, beyond... Well. <laughs> But Bobby, beyond my reintroduction there, why don't you reintroduce yourself to our listeners? Yeah, I, th- I think you did a great job, actually. Uh, you know, five-time TEDx speaker, Inc. Magazine Top 100. I, the professional speaking was my main jam, but my leadership expertise was originally in the area of just leadership development. But then I started developing uh, skills in networking, authentic connection, building networking and networking events. Then I started talking about personal branding quite a lot. Then I became known as a digital influencer. So I started talking about digital thought leadership on LinkedIn, on, on Twitter, on Instagram, on YouTube. And now, you know, I really focus on uh, thought leadership, which is really a big passion of mine because all the different elements of the things I talk about from relationships to digital presence to storytelling and speaking are all part of thought leadership. So that's kind of where I focus my attention. Thanks for tuning in to the HR Chat Podcast. If you're enjoying this episode, We'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe and leave a five-star review on your podcast platform of choice. And now, back to the conversation. So, Bobby, you love to talk about, among other things, you love to talk about leadership. And one of the trends that you talk about is multi-platform content strategy. Why is that so important, Bobby? Yeah, you know, I, I've been a digital content creator for a long, long time, and uh, many people espouse the idea, well, you know, if you if you only have time for one, pick LinkedIn or pick Twitter or pick Instagram or whatever it might be. But uh, for me, the biggest trends right now, particularly in building thought leadership, is multi-platform content. So that what that means is, uh, you know, you can have a primary as your base, but then you need to put stuff in other content pieces. We're seeing right now people I know on LinkedIn, who were always focused on LinkedIn, and now they're starting to see, hey, TikTok is growing, the organic growth is amazing there, there, so they're taking advantage of it. I have another client I work with who was doing LinkedIn all the time, but then started doing Twitter, and all of a sudden people started liking his tweets. He's like, you know, that, that's actually pretty good. The reason why multi-platform is so important is because if you're trying to build yourself as a thought leader, as an authority expert in your field, so that you can start getting all those awesome opportunities for your business or your brand, then having uh, more than one platform allows you to reach new audiences, to diversify your network, to actually leverage the different platforms in a way that works best. You know, a good example of this is for people, someone like myself, who's a total video guy, you know, I'm a public speaker, so I'm, I, I'm able to do videos pretty well. So for me, 
Instagram and TikTok are natural places for me to create videos that will probably get more attention than they would on other platforms. Other people who might be good at other types of things, maybe they're good at imagery based, or maybe they're good at you know putting together carousel posts. Again, there are other platforms that can, that can work for them and play to their strengths. So for me, it being able to expand that, the, my, my presence out there, being here, if you look at all the biggest thought leaders out there, you look at Simon Sinek or Brandon Brown or Richard Branson, they're not just on one platform. Gary Vaynerchuk, there are multiple platforms because they realize that there's a way for them to get across all those different channels and invite new people into their community because the people who will find you will eventually go to the main place they want to hang out with. If someone finds me on Twitter but prefers LinkedIn, they'll follow me on LinkedIn. If someone finds me on Instagram but prefers me on Instagram, they'll just stay on Instagram and follow myself there. And the other thing is with, with multi-platform strategies, most of us, including myself, will repurpose the same content across the platform. So it's actually pretty easy to do that without actually adding quadruple the time. I'm basically increasing my time by maybe 10, 15% for content creation. This episode of the HR Chat Podcast is supported by Holistic AI, a software solution for AI risk management and auditing. Holistic AI is the platform provider for those wanting to harness AI ethically and safely. We help clients to monitor and evidence AI compliance with changing regulations and standards. Global companies already trusting Holistic AI to manage AI risks include Unilever, MindBridge, Jawbite, and Starling Bank. Learn more at holisticai.com. Bobby, what are some of the benefits or outcomes of building thought leadership? Big question, I know, um, but you're, you're an example of someone who put in the put in the effort, put in the hours. You're you're a very well respected, well known leader in the space. People look to you and they say, "Hey, what would Bobby Umar do?" That's what I do before I go to sleep every night. Um, uh, but what are the benefits <laughs> or outcomes of, of of building up that kind of presence? Yeah, so I mean, you know. Before, when people used to talk about, you know, being seen as a leader or people talked about personal branding as a means to stand out, which is important. I mean, I, I really t- try to focus with people on, okay, let's get clarity in your personal brand. What are you? What's your purpose? How do you, how do people remember you? How do you stand out? But elevating that personal brand to a thought leader brand, that's something where now you're positioning yourself as an authority expert in your field, which means that you are setting yourself up as the person known for expertise in a specific one, two, three areas of expertise. When people mention the area of expertise, your name gets mentioned. When people seek out advice or seek out help or seek out counsel for that area of expertise, they will look you up and reach out to you. And what are the benefits of that? Well, once you have that thought leadership expertise, that's when the magic happens. Because, you know, for me as a professional speaker, I started getting more speaking gigs. I started, getting, I started speaking around the world because it became well known. I started getting, getting TEDx talks because people wanted me to come to their TEDx talks because they knew I, they knew of me and knew my brand and wanted me to speak there. It leads to lots of things. So, you know, for people who want to get media opportunities to speak on television or radio, people who want to get a book deal, people who want to get a TEDx talk, um, that the more your, elevated, your brand is, is elevated, the better off you're going to be in terms of attracting people. And then, of course... Uh, from, from a career perspective, right, if you have your own expertise as a thought leader and you're putting content out there on LinkedIn and Twitter and whatnot, and you're, let's say you're known as a real estate guru, the next thing you know, you may be hired by someone else who may want to recruit you because of how strong brand you have. Because if you're just stuck in your in your career, in your company, you don't do anything and no one knows you, then the only, when you get fired or you let go or you want to leave, it takes some time and energy to get out there and, and put, the, put the pedal to the metal and, and try to find a new job. But having a thought leadership brand actually creates far more opportunity because I can't even tell you how many times people reach out to me for potential jobs, <laughs> even though I don't want to go to work in corporate, but you know, they, they reach out to me anyways, because they see me and they want me to work for them or their organization and whatnot. And then from a business perspective, exact same thing. So now you have a strong thought leadership brand that leads to more leads for clients. It leads to more conversation, it leads to more people checking out your website, checking out your, uh, checking out your LinkedIn profile, and more importantly, reaching out to you because they know you, Right. The beginning of the beginning of you know awareness of digital is you know they're they they're aware of you and then they're familiar with you and now they like you and they trust you and when that happens and they see the value you bring they want to work with you so for me the outcomes and benefits of thought leadership are huge for your career or your business you're going to get more opportunities more revenue more book deals more TED talks and, and more speaking gigs and all the things that you want to do that are 
uh, not only beneficial to your company brand, right? Because your brand's good, your company's going to look good too, but also beyond that in terms of your overall career and your story and legacy. So that's why I say build a thought leadership brand for yourself and build your story and legacy. Right on. But is that potentially, Bobby, a double-edged sword? What I mean by that is you mentioned that, you know, if one builds up their their personal brand, they are probably going to be uh, more desirable to an employer. Uh, part of that is, I guess, because they can espouse the virtues of that employer brand to, to the world. However, yeah. what if... What if they join a company, okay, and they've got, I don't know, 500,000 followers or something, they join a company and it doesn't end well. And then they come, they, they leave that company and they've got this huge following and they start saying mean things about that company because that company can't control what they say because that's that's their personal brand. That's their followers, right? What, what happens in that situation? Well, I mean, I think that that's something that can happen whether you have a strong thought leadership brand or not, right? I mean, there are people who, uh, you know, companies need to work and do a good job of, you know, uh, serving their clients, serving their customers, serving their employees in the best way possible so that when they do leave, then they're going to speak highly of that, of that organization. Because if they don't, then th that employee, whether they have 500 followers, because you, the truth is you could have 500 followers on LinkedIn and complain about a company and you can get a lot of traction depending on what you talk about. Uh, but that's another reason why I uh, work with a lot of organizations is like, to say, look, it's important for you to actually invest in your employees to teach them how to be, get clear in their personal brand. A lot of organizations are terrified of that because they're like, well, what if I get my employees to do their personal brand and then they realize they're not aligned with the company and they leave? I'm like, well, you want them to leave. Like, you, you want the people who are not aligned with their company to not stick around. You want them to leave. So you want the people who are aligned to be even more productive, be more low, to be more retained. And that's why that's, that's so important. Um, and again, when it comes to this, this double-edged sword, I mean, that's why organizations have to do a good job of nurturing, promoting, and supporting their employees because uh, one bad employee that's vocal uh, is bad for sure. Um, but, you know, having someone who is influential uh, and they're bad, then that's also another, another issue for sure. I mean, for the most part, though, most people like myself who have strong thought brands out there also realize that we have an audience that we serve as well. And for me to spend my time ranting about a company in a negative way all the time is not actually going to serve my brand or my audience very, very well. So that's why, uh, you know, I, uh, it, it's certainly, it's, it's a risk you have to navigate, but I don't think it's, it's that, it, it's not going to be that much of a risk if you're a good company uh, treating your employees really, really well. Yeah, fair enough. If, if you know, if, if, if you're not mean to your employees, if you treat them well, then um, they probably won't say bad things about you. So just don't be don't be a bad employer and um, even better when okay. they leave they will talk about even better when you leave they'll still talk about you in a positive light like i still talk about my days at craft in unilever in a nice way i mean i, I could talk about all the the bad things that happen and sometimes i do in, a, in the case of like a specific podcast or whatever but for the most part i'm always very very positive because i understand it's, it's better to be that way than to not oh my goodness bobby so what you've been on a, on a podcast before and said nasty things about it don't do that with the hr gazette please oh my goodness uh okay so obviously you are on twitter and um, what is your take on the recent elon musk changes and shifts and before you answer that listeners bobby and i were talking a bit about mr musk before we uh, hit recording today I, I i get that he's done some questionable things recently my issue with, with elon musk is that I'm still hoping that he's the guy to take us to Mars. And I'd love to see that before my, my last day on, on this planet, Bobby, well, go. If you want, if you want that bill, then you should tell him to get off of Twitter because he's spending way too much emotional time and energy on the platform, talking to people and saying yeah, a lot yeah. of really bad and inappropriate things and making terrible jokes and just tweeting like crazy. So I think that, uh, you know, uh, he, you know, he could have done better spending his time with, building up Tesla and SpaceX and doing that. So, I mean, the, the, the challenge is that, you know, there are a lot, a lot of these billionaires out there who put themselves in the space, uh, you know, are uh, themselves focused on themselves. And I think that's a, that's, that's a limiting factor to innovation. And that actually is what happened with, uh, with Twitter, which is all the innovation that came down the pipeline from the very day he started, most of them were based on, here's what I think, because he, saw that there was oh, oh twitter you know i love twitter and twitter is really uh, really great but i'm annoyed with twitter so you know what i'm just gonna maybe i can do it better i'm gonna buy it even though his expertise is more on what he did with tesla and spacex than it is with a 
social media machine, which is a completely different beast, different culture and a different world uh, that he has to navigate. And so he started coming up with all these ideas that were kind of his own doing. Some of them were based on his own clearly emotional projection on various things. And a lot of them were wrong. And I would say that of the, and you know, I know, I know you mentioned that there was a couple things. Well, actually it's really hundreds of things. There are actually so many things. There's a few things that were good. So I, I appreciate that, but I would say that a big, big chunk of them were wrong or poorly put together or the worst part of it really was most of them came out without even talking to your clients, your customers. I think the, the first thing that they could have done is talk to people because almost every single thing that came out that was denigrated by the entire Twitter population were, were by Twitter users and, and mega mega influencers and people who use this platform significantly, including myself. And we're like, why would you do that? That makes no sense. And so, you know, the, the, the blue checkmark one is the, the one that kind of is funny because it's like, okay, it's, I understand you want to have a paid subscription model, but like, you know, they have all these legacy accounts. So just have different colors. You have one for a government, you have one for a business. So you have one for the legacy people like the LeBron James and the Margaret Atwoods and the Stephen Kings who are all creating a crap load of continents platform, which is part of the value of the, of the platform. And they have other people who want to, you know, get that recognition, that official verification. And so give them that as well. Instead, that you know, they're doing a lot of stuff that they're not really listening to. However, that said, you know, my hope is that eventually, you know, um, if Twitter does poorly and is operationally losing a lot of money, which right now there's an article that came out that uh, the the Twitter blue checkmark subscription model has tanked and now he's $13 billion in debt with this company, which is pretty bad. Uh, but, you know, I always think that the best move would, would be because because he also got rid of all his accountability people and he, and he's he basically, like, he's like this Wizard of Oz in this dark room yelling at people to do stuff. After, but then he fired all these people. So, and that, that fired, the firing all the people without even talking about them, you know, that, again, that's another big HR debacle, right? So I think that um, it's good to have policies in place. It's good to have, especially for such a large organization, right? You have to have policies in place. You have to have, you have to treat your employees really well. You have to listen to your customers. You have to, as an organization, you know, have that, uh, open communication and and be willing to to share your disagreement with someone in the workplace culture because I think the other thing is that now there's this, this this toxic workplace culture where I think people are you know he was getting mad because people were sharing secrets well it's because of the culture that was created so now that said you know my general take is hopefully he will find uh, an operational team to run things without him and then he can focus on the space thing uh, but as I tell most people you know Twitter. Uh, if the U.S. can get on with, or at least survive Twitter for four years, or sorry, survive Trump for four years, they can survive Elon, the Elon Musk thing. I certainly believe that Twitter will stay. It still it still has incredible ability to amplify uh, awareness of causes. I think it, it, from a DEI perspective, it is one of the greatest places to share stories and to amplify uh, organizations and people who are doing really, really great things for that cause, inclusion, and equity, and diversity. And so I think that's why, and, and Twitter is also fantastic for uh, nonprofit organizations to build their voice and get get their name heard. <clears throat> I mean, you can certainly do it on other platforms too, but the, the, the amplification opportunity on Twitter is far, far greater than anything I've ever seen uh, with any other platform. So, you know, I think organizations uh, need to have a presence. Um, and I think that uh, we will get through it. And, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm a prolific content creator on Twitter and I do love it for all the things it does. But I also think that the, my favorite part of it is being able to give voice to the, all the organizations and brands and causes out there that, uh, you know, need that extra boost. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Uh, we've only got two and a half minutes left for this particular interview before we have to wrap it up. So I'm going to wow. challenge you. I'm going to challenge you to answer the next question in one minute or less. Here we go. Uh, given the clients that you work with, Bobby, what are the biggest challenges they have to build their brands and how do you help them overcome those in one minute or less? Go. Yeah. So I think most people who are out there struggling with their career, their business or brand is, is they felt they, you know, they struggle because there's a lot of overwhelm out there. There's a lot of uncertainty and they're not aligned with what they're trying to do. And so it's, and they have a lot of fears and doubts that are holding them back. And most people I talk to in corporate who want to transition or change are fearful of doing so. And the way to do it is number one is clarity, right? Getting clarity on your brand, who you are, how you serve people. I think that goes a long way. Number two, having more confidence, building your confidence. 
So when you're clear, and when you have more clarity in your brand, you get more confident in your purpose and what you're doing and how you help people. And then being consistent. So consistency of action, consistency of putting content out there, consistency of talking to people, building your network. And then I always talk about the community and coaching piece, getting a coach to help you out, getting a community uh, to support you and help you learn and grow. You know, we have a community called the Thought Leaders Brand Club, which helps businesses and brands and individuals grow their brand, grow their career, and take it to the next level by, you know, leveraging diverse experts. So I think uh, those things, clarity, confidence, consistency, coaching, and community, if you have those five things, you will then be able to take your career and elevate to that next level the way you want it to be and the way you deserve. Excellent. And time for just one more question. So let's find out how our listeners can connect with and learn more about you. Bobby, are you on any of the social media channels by any chance? Uh, I'm on every single one, to, to be honest. But uh, I think the best way to find me is, you know, uh, my websites are rayallen.com and uh, dypb.ca and thoughtleadersbrand.club. Uh, I run three companies, so that's kind of what that's all about. But, you know, you can follow me on LinkedIn, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Uh, those are the places where, you know, people reach out to me. And, uh, and that's how I love to help organizations and individuals. Excellent. And if you want to learn more about Bobby and all the cool things he gets up to do check out episode 222 uh, and uh, have a listen there too um, but that just leaves me to say for today Bobby Umar thank you very much for being my returning guest on this episode of the HR chat show thanks Bill happy to be here and listeners as always until next time happy working thanks for listening to the HR chat show if you enjoyed this episode why not subscribe and listen to some of the hundreds of episodes published by HR Gazette? And remember, for what's new in the world of work, subscribe to the show, follow us on social media, and visit hrgazette.com.